And I want to make sure that you understand that this proceeding is separate from any plea deal that you and your lawyers may attempt or are attempting to work out in federal court. Uh, your guilty plea in this court uh, can't be appealed, even if the federal proceedings don't turn out how you may hope they do. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Uh, the, the court would also like confirmation from your attorneys that they have fully explained that any federal proceedings and negotiations in federal court are completely separate from this proceeding. Did you confirm that? So explained, Your Honor. I understood. Very, very well. Uh, with all that in mind, you still wish to plead guilty? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, are you completely satisfied with your attorney's representation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, what are the elements of the charges and the facts in the proof that the state would use to trial if it went to trial? Your Honor, if I might, um, before we uh, go over this, I'd like to explain to the court that uh, there would be some coarse and inappropriate language that I was going to use to, as quotes that were made during the course of these events. Uh, to be aware of that. Um, I certainly approve of it, but unfortunately, we're going to have to say it to the record. All right, uh, we're all adults here. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. The statement showed, Your Honor, that on or about uh, June 25th, 2011, the defendant, Darrell Paul Dedman, attended a birthday party and celebrated with a bonfire in a field near Puckett, Mississippi. It was a birthday party of a friend of the defendant's. This occurred during the evening hours. The attendees of the party consumed alcohol, and at some point during the party, the defendant and others discussed about the possibility of going to Jackson to harass and assault African Americans, whom they referred to as niggers. Others were recruited by the defendant and others to go to Jaffrica, which is a derogatory name referring to the number of African Americans living in the area. Words to the effect of, let's go fuck with some niggers were used. This was not unusual as the defendant had been to Jackson with others in the preceding weeks for the purpose of harassing African Americans. The harassment at first took the form of verbal assaults, then later escalated into physical encounters. They targeted African American individuals who were sometimes homeless and or under the influence of alcohol or drugs. The purpose was to attack only those that would not likely resist and or report it to the authorities. As the party in Puckett broke up, the defendant agreed to meet with others at the Texaco station on Highway 80 in Brandon, Mississippi. Before traveling to Jackson, four of the individuals drove to Jackson from Brandon in a white four-door Jeep. It was decided that the defendant and two others would go to Jackson in his Ford F-250. The four individuals left ahead of the defendant while he waited on the other two companions to arrive at the Texaco. The two vehicles maintained cell phone contact. At approximately 4.45 a.m., the individuals in the white Jeep stopped at a Wendy's restaurant on Ellis and Highway 80 in Jackson when they saw Mr. James Craig Anderson, a 47-year-old African-American who appeared to be intoxicated, alone and in an adjacent hotel parking lot. They decided he would be their target and phoned the defendant who was on his way from Brandon with the other two occupants. The driver of the white Jeep drove his car to the hotel parking lot of the hotel near Mr. Anderson. Two of the occupants got out of the car of the white Jeep to stall Mr. Anderson under the pretense of assisting him until the defendant arrived. Upon his arrival, the defendant got out of the truck and approached Mr. Anderson, who was engaged in a conversation with the ones who got out of the white Jeep. The physical assault began when the one of the passengers of White Jeep, unprovoked, hit Mr. Anderson with his fist, knocking him to the ground. The defendant then straddled the victim and punched him several times with his fist in the face and the head. This lasted for several seconds. When the assault was over, the two individuals from the White Jeep rejoined the other two occupants and drove off. At least one of the occupants of the White Jeep yelled, White Power, as they left. The defendant was on his way back to the truck, raised his fist, and he likewise yelled white power. The defendant then rejoined the other two occupants of the truck and proceeded to leave the hotel parking lot to join the other vehicle, which had already left. The defendant then saw the victim, Mr. Anderson, appear in his headlights just past the exit of the hotel on the side of the road. And the defendant deliberately used his vehicle to run over the victim. Run over the victim. Someone inside the defendant's car yelled a racial slur. The autopsy later revealed that the victim died as a result of the serious injuries he sustained. 
After almost, immediate, almost immediately after the impact, someone inside the Ford truck phoned the occupants of the other vehicle and stated words to the effect that the defendant just ran that nigger over. At least one witness called 911 gave a description of the vehicles and members of Jackson Police Department arrested the defendant on his way back to Brandon on Interstate 20. That occurred here in the 1st Judicial District of Fines County, Mississippi. Mr. Devin, are those facts essentially true? Yes, Your Honor. The court finds that this plea is voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently made and finds that the facts are the basis for it. It finds the defendant guilty as charged. Does the state have a recommendation? The state does, Your Honor. The state would recommend that the court, that this defendant be sentenced to serve a term of life in prison for the offense of murder in Mississippi Code Annotated Section 97-3-19-1A and life imprisonment for the enhancement Mississippi Code Annotated 99-19-307 and that these two life sentences run concurrently or at the same time. Does the state wish to present anything prior to sentence? Yes, Your Honor. I have one question. Y'all can have a seat. Yes, Your Honor. Feel free to speak at the podium or up here in front of the court. Yes, Your Honor. If you prefer to sit down. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jenkins will adjust the microphone for you. If you would, just make sure you speak into it. You may proceed. Would you please state your name? Bob Randleson Young. And how are you related to James Greg Anderson? He was my brother. And Ms. Anderson, would you please tell the court anything that you want to tell the court this morning? First of all, we would like to thank the Lord for granting us strength, guidance, and a will to stay living during these trying times. We first of all thank the district attorney, Robert Shula Smith. We thank Scott Magalio, the FBI, the Justice Department. We thank Pastor Richardson and Jordan. We thank our dear attorney, Winston Thompson, Morris Dees, everyone who has been here for us. These last nine months have been very difficult for my family. We've cried. We've laughed. We reminisced about our beloved brother, Craig. It was a loss that I cannot even explain. Craig was a big-hearted person, one who loved his fellow man, caring, family-oriented, and had a big sense of humor. My brother, Craig, would give me the shirt off of his back. Because of my brother, James Craig Anderson, our lives were richer with love, respect, and the love of God. We, the Anderson family, are praying for racial conciliation, not only in Mississippi, but all over this land and country. We are praying for the defendant, Detman, and his family, that they find peace. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything further? That's all we would add, Your Honor. Before I pass the sentence, does the defense wish to present anything? Just briefly, Your Honor, Mr. Devlin has something. I can't hear you. Yes, sir, just briefly, Mr. Devlin has something that he would like to say. I believe the best way to do it is with that microphone. Whatever works, it'd be fine. I would like to apologize to the Harrison family for all the horrible things that I have done. I am extremely sorry that you feel like I lose a loved one the way I shall do it. I am sincerely sorry I do take full responsibility for my actions on that night. I pray for y'all's families every day. 
like a humble your heart. And I God will soften your hearts to forgive me. Also tell that God will comfort y'all through our horrible tragedy. I also got to ask God for forgiveness for my sins daily. I know that I repented from all those wicked ways, and I do know no more evil. I did a very malicious thing that night for no reason. I wish I could take it all back and restore what your family has lost. I ask and beg for your forgiveness. I know it may feel as if doing so is impossible. I will pay for my own doings during the time of the poor law is me. I know that no amount of time will ever bring back your brother and ever restore your heart. I was young, I was dumb, I was ignorant, I was full of hatred, envy, and strife. I was not raised the way that I acted that night. I was raised in a godly house, in a godly manner. I chose to go on the wrong path. As I stand before you today, I am a changed man, and I am a godly man. God has showed me to see no color. God showed me that we're all made in the same image of God. We're all made from the same thing, which is from dust. I do not ask y'all to forgive. I do ask y'all to forgive me. Thank you. Well, is there any further for the defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, you need to come to the podium. Any further from the state? That's all we have, Your Honor. By the court. Mr. Edmonds, having heard your admissions, the very walls of this courtroom cry out for justice. You have admitted killing a man simply because of his race. Your prejudice has brought shame upon you and placed a great stain on the state of Mississippi. Whatever excuse you may offer for what you have done, forget that. There is no excuse you can offer to the family of Mr. Anderson or to your fellow Mississippians who have to try to reconcile the horrible damage you have caused. All the hard work we have done to move our state forward from that earthen dam in Neshoba County to here has been stained by you, a stain which will take years to fade. To the Anderson family, first, may God bless you and console you on the loss of your early fallen loved one. The name of this case is literally the state of Mississippi versus Daryl Bedman. Know that Mississippians think about this senseless crime the way you think about this, this crime. With all her troubled past, the state of Mississippi stands with you today and condemn, condemns this despicable crime and says there is no excuse for this. To those assembled here and watching this, know that this craven act isn't who we are. We can say this now. Maybe there was a time when we couldn't. Millions of Mississippians of all races worship, eat, work, and play together as friends and fellow citizens every day. One purpose of punishment is deterrence. I'm hopeful that when others see the stiff sentence handed down today, they will hesitate before they attack an innocent person motivated by raw racial hatred. Maybe a life will be saved. Accordingly, Mr. Dedman, for the conviction of murder, there is one sentence and one sentence only. I hereby sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life in prison. As an enhanced penalty for your admitted racist motivation, I hereby sentence you to an additional life sentence. These sentences will be served concurrently. Is there anything else from the state? That's all we have, Your Honor. Anything else from the defense? No. Uh, let the defendant be removed from the courtroom at this time. Everyone else remain seated until I dismiss you. Uh, this will just take uh, a minute or two, and then we'll give you instructions for exiting the courtroom.
time. Y'all be patient. This will just take a few more moments. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bailiff Jenkins is going to tell you how now to exit safely from the courtroom. Please listen to his instructions on doing that. Uh, otherwise, the court is adjourned.